Hey guys, Levelcap here and welcome to This Week in Gaming. Overwatch has finally been released and Microsoft might be working on bringing the Rift to Xbox One. If you're here for something like FPS or DLC news, just click its category to skip to that section of the video. Mobile users see the video description for timestamps. Overwatch is out and I'm addicted. Despite some minor launch day issues, it's clear that the months Blizzard has left their game in beta has really refined it to the point of near perfection. Sure, there's some minor changes they could make to improve matchmaking and whatnot, but overall they certainly nailed it. If you want my full review, click here or see the description for my review video. Personally, I'm really looking forward to Overwatch being played on a professional level at eSports events. It's one thing to play with friends and work out strategies that work against other random players, but it's a totally different thing to see the pros approach the game. I really can't wait to see what kind of team compositions and ability use strategies come out of the esports scenes for Overwatch. Hopefully whatever the pros come up with will also work for us casuals. And while Overwatch managed to sell out of stock on Amazon, Battleborn's price has been cut in half just to help it compete. Gearbox also released a new character and gave all players double XP for five days. Now, Battleborn isn't a bad game. By all accounts, it's a cut above the average, especially in the shooter genre. But competing head-to-head -head with Blizzard has made them rethink their marketing strategy and reducing the price is a good move. It won't really put much pressure on Blizzard, at least as far as I can tell, but just having two games competing against each other is overall good for this kind of genre of shooter, since both companies will be working hard to improve their game as much as possible. In hardware news, several new details about the future of Xbox One have been leaked this week ahead of a rumored announcement at E3. Microsoft is allegedly working on two new versions of the Xbox One, a slim one that's 40% smaller than the current hardware, and a new, more powerful Xbox One codenamed Scorpio. If the leak specs for the PlayStation Neo and Scorpio are accurate, it would mean that the new Xbox One is the more powerful of the two hardware updates. Additionally, Ars Technica is reporting that a well-known European studio is planning a new VR game set in the universe of an established, long-running franchise. This is going to come out for Xbox One in 2017 to coincide with the release of Scorpio. The upgraded Xbox One is also rumored to be compatible with the existing Oculus Rift units. While this is good news for Rift owners, it doesn't mean that it will be the only option for Xbox One owners looking to play VR games. There's no way Microsoft can compete with the PlayStation VR if their headsets cost nearly double the price of both Sony's headset and the Xbox One itself. Chances are Oculus and Microsoft are working together to make a Gear VR style budget headset that provides a decent VR experience for the Xbox One. Considering their partnership, it seems highly likely that Microsoft will be announcing an Oculus designed Xbox One headset, if not at E3, then sometime later this year. In our last bit of Microsoft news, the rumor mill is abuzz with something called Project Helix. Reported by Kotaku via an unnamed source, Project Helix is supposedly Microsoft's codename for bringing the Xbox and Windows brands together and includes future Halo games being released on PC. Halo being a flagship console title has led some people to dismiss this rumor, but to me it makes perfect sense. PC gaming has exploded in popularity over the past few years to the point that it easily rivals if not beats console game sales. Microsoft have made real effort this year to create a walled garden on Windows 10 for gaming, which many people see as them trying to gain control over PC gaming. If Halo were to come to the PC and be a Windows Store exclusive title, it would drive millions of sales for Microsoft. Even if they sell less consoles because of it, I'm sure Microsoft can see the potential and millions of new users signing up for their store. Conceptually, the idea makes a lot of sense, but it certainly won't work unless Microsoft puts more effort into creating better console to PC ports, as their previous titles this year have not done so well. In other FPS news, Titanfall 2 might feature a grappling hook. Leaked by a Reddit user, the grappling hook is designed to complement the game's free running mechanics, as well as function as a weapon that pulls enemy players around. The leak also includes mentions of bigger maps and an October release, but aside from an image that matches official artwork on the Titanfall 2 website, nothing about the rumors have been verified yet. In other upcoming game news, both Kingdom Come Deliverance and No Man's Sky have been delayed. Kingdom Come is now set for a 2017 release and No Man's Sky will now be releasing on August 9th. 
Both games are highly anticipated. No Man's Sky is even one of the top 10 games I'm looking forward to this year. Both games have also been delayed previously, with Kingdom Come having been set for release over a year ago. In the end, I think the wait will be worth it for both games, as I've played the beta of Kingdom Come, and it does look like it's shaping up to be a very immersive experience. Another highly anticipated game that was supposed to launch years ago with the PlayStation 3, The Last Guardian, might finally come out this year. In an interview with Edge Magazine, the game's director said, this is the year we will see the game's release. I do have some worries, but I am also very excited. Considering the first real footage of the game was premiered at last year's E3, it seems reasonable to assume that Sony will be showing off more of the game and hopefully announce a release date at their press event during E3. Our last piece of upcoming game news is a new trailer for Ghost Recon's Wildlands that has been released by Ubisoft. Featuring some new gameplay mechanics and more accurate idea of what the game will actually look like on release, the new footage should excite people who enjoy co-op gameplay. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to wait until E3 for a release date for Wildlands. While a 2016 release isn't off the table, it seems likely that Wildland won't release until 2017. And before I get into DLC news, I wanted to take a second to mention a new Doom mod called Doom for Doom. Its creators are essentially building Doom 2016 in the original Doom engine. As you can see from the video they released this week, they've already recreated the weapons from Doom 2016, and honestly, they look pretty great. Thanks to its incredible moddable engine and the game assets, the original Doom has been updated and enhanced throughout the years in a way that not only reminds people of how good a game it is, but also how important it is to the FPS community. Doom was the game that made FPS a thing for most gamers, so seeing these kinds of mods still being produced today is great, and I think it really speaks to the impact it's had and continues to have on the community. Another game that has had massive impact on the shooter genre over the years, Unreal Tournament, has had a new map release this week for its upcoming new entry in the series. Set in an ancient cavern, the new map looks like something out of Uncharted 4. The new Unreal Tournament is currently in development, but is actually playable now, ahead of its free-to-play release whenever it's finished. If you're at all disappointed with Doom 2016's multiplayer, I highly recommend you check out Unreal Tournament. It's basically what a lot of people who think the Doom multiplayer should be like and runs pretty well despite being a pre-alpha state. The new map release is sure to bring in plenty of people to play with as well, so finding active servers shouldn't be hard at all. Rockstar announced their next DLC for GTA 5 Online this week. It's called Further Adventures in Finance and Felony, and it's releasing on June 7th. The DLC will give players the ability to become the CEO of their own criminal organization. Featuring a high-rise headquarters and warehouse properties for storing illegal goods, as well as new vehicles and new features, the DLC is GTA 5 Online's biggest yet. And our final piece of news this week is that FaZe have decided to leave WISA, that's World Esports Association. In their press release about the withdrawal, FaZe made it clear that they believe in WISA's goals, saying that building a league system with a governing body is interesting and maybe even what esports needs to take the next step forward. FaZe confirmed that there is an entrance fee to be a WISA member, but there is no penalty for leaving the organization, monetary or otherwise. WISA has come under intense scrutiny by the esports community as it seems like ESL are using it to exert more control over players, their teams, and the tournaments they play in. With Turner's E-League being a massive success this week for everyone involved, it'll be interesting to see what a mainstream media's influence does to the future of both WISA and esports in general. And oh yeah, there's one little last tidbit of information. EA Play is happening on June 12th through June 14th, and there's going to be a live stream involved for a Battlefield 1 gameplay event. I've actually been invited out to this event to partake in the live stream. I'll be on Neebs Gaming Squad. We'll have Jack Frags and several other YouTubers in there. So not only is there going to be Battlefield 1 gameplay shown off pre-E3, but I will be partaking in the event. So I'll have more information on that as we receive it. Anyway, that wraps it up for this week in gaming. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.